Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss how to draw a precedence diagram. So at the end of this video, you should be able to understand and draw a precedence diagram. So basically, what is a precedence diagram? A precedence diagram is basically a tool a construction manager or a project manager we use to schedule activities in a project plan. So a construction manager, we use either the precedence diagram, which, is, which can also be called activities on node, or they can also use activities on arrow. So basically, we have two activities. We have activities on node, and we have activities on arrow. So activities on node can also be called precedence diagram. So let's take a look at the table we have on the screen. So as you can see on the screen, we are asked to draw a precedence diagram and to find the project completion time. So as you can see here, we have the activity ID. So basically, this is the ID of the activities or the work that needs to be done. So we use an alphabet to represent the activities. Then as you can see over here, we are also having activity description. So this is basically the work that needs to be completed. Basically, it is what describe the work that needs to be completed. Then as you can see here, we also have the duration. So the duration is basically the time it's going to take for each activity or each work to be completed. And as you can see here, we have this in weeks. So basically, a project manager we either use weeks, months, year, or daily. So it depends on the project and manager. So sometimes they can use weeks, sometimes they can use day, sometimes they can use uh, months, sometimes they can also use a uh, uh, year. But usually they go with weeks. Then lastly, we have precedence. So basically what this means is, in order for one activity to start, there needs to be an activity that needs to end. So basically, in order for activity C to start, activity A and activity B need to finish, as you can see. Why activity A and activity B, they all start at the same time. That is why we are having a blank um, preceding year. That's why we are having this um, dash line here, because A and B are going to start at the same time. Why for activity C, it is going to wait for activity A and activity B to finish before it can start. Then for activity D, it is going to wait for activity C to finish before it can start. So you can you can jump from activity A to activity D. You need to uh, follow the precedence. So one activity needs to finish before another activity starts. So now we know this, let's now draw a precedence diagram and we are also going to find the project completion time. So before you can draw the precedence diagram, you first need to know some values. So if you take a look at this side of the screen, we have some parameters we need to understand when drawing the precedence diagram. So as you can see here, we have ES. ES is basically the earliest start so it is the earliest time to start the project then we have ls which is the latest time to start the project then we have ef which is the earliest finish so it is the earliest time to finish the project then we have lf which is the late finish so it is the latest time to finish the work or to finish the activity then we have tf tf mean the total float so it is going to be the late finish minus the earliest finish or then d is basically the duration that is the time it's going to take to finish the activity or to finish the work then id is basically the activity id or the work id so now let's draw the precedence diagram so if you take a look at this i already structured the precedence diagram out so it is going to be easy for you to understand it this way so now if you take a look at this uh, president's diagram we know that activity a and activity b they are starting at the same time so what you need to do is whenever you are drawing a president's diagram you need a start time and you also need a finish time so what do i mean by this you need to start the first activity or the or the first uh, work you need to start it using a indicator and this indicator is going to be 
the zero starting activity. So you, it doesn't matter if you have three, four, five, one activity starting at the same time. You need to make sure that you have a project starting activity and it is going to be this first boss here. So it doesn't matter the number of activity that is going to start first. You always need to have a start activity and you are going to have a close activity. So take note of that. So now what we need to do now is we have the project starting activity and this is zero because we have not started any work. So because this is the project starting activity, so this is this part is going to be zero. That is the earliest start. So we need to move this to activity A and activity B. So this is basically zero plus zero, which is going to give us zero. So here is also zero. So we are going to distribute zero to activity A and activity B. So we are going to have zero here. We're also going to have zero here. So now for the fourth pass, we need to add the values. Then for the backward pass, we are going to subtract the values. So here is going to be zero plus one, which is going to give us one. Then here is also going to be zero plus one, which is going to give us one. So now, as you can see, for activity C, we are having activity A and activity B linking up to activity C. So meaning, what we are going to do is we are going to take the highest value. But in this case, the values are similar. We are having one and one. So meaning, we are just going to move one. So here is going to be one. So now we are going to add 1 plus 2, which is going to give us 3. So now we are going to move this to activity D. So it's going to be 3 here. So 3 plus 4 is going to give us 7. So here is 7. So now we need to move 7 to activity E. So we are going to have 7 here. So 7 plus 1 is going to give us 8. So we also need to move um, 8 to activity F because, as you can see, activity E is connecting activity F. As you can see, activity E is connecting activity F. So we are going to have 8 here. So 8 plus um, C is. So 8 plus C is. This is going to give us 14. So now, this is where you need to pay close attention. As you can see, for activity H, activity G, and activity I, they are all connected to activity F. So meaning we are going to distribute this. 14, we are going to distribute it to activity G, activity H, and also to activity I. So here we are going to have 14, we are also going to have 14, yeah, then we are also going to have 14 for activity I. So for activity H, it is going to be 14 plus 4, which is going to give us 18. Then for activity G, it is going to be 14 plus 2, which is going to give us 16. So now for activity K, as you can see, we're having two activities linking to activity K. We're having activity H and we're also having activity I. So we're going to take the highest um, value. So the highest value is 18. So I'm going to have 18 here. So 18 plus uh, 4 this is going to give us 22. So we're having 22 here. Now for activity J, we're just going to move 18. We're going to move it here. So this is going to be 18. So 18 plus 2 is going to give us 20. So now for activity L, we are going to move 22 here. So this is going to be 22. So 22 plus 1 is going to give us 23. So now for activity N, we are having three activities linking up to activity N. We are having activity G, activity J, and also activity L. So I'm going to take the highest value. So the highest value, as you can see here, is 23. So this is going to be... 23. So now for activity M, we're just going to move 16. We're going to move it here. So this is going to be this is going to be 16. So 16 plus 1 is going to give us 17. Then we're going to move 23 to activity O. So here we have 23. So 23 plus 1 is going to give us 24. Then for activity N, 23 plus 2 is going to give us 25. So we have 25 here. So now for the last activity, which is activity P, as you can see, we're having three activities linking up to activity P. So we're having 17, 25, and 24. So the highest value is 25. So I'm going to move 25 here. So basically, the duration for activity P is 1. So let's input 1 here. So now it's going to be 25 plus 1, which is going to give us 26. So now we are done with the forward pass. So we now need to move backward. And this is going to be the backward pass. So for the backward pass, I'm going to use another color so that it doesn't confuse you guys. 
So now we are just going to move 26. We are going to move it here as well. So this is the starting point for the backward pass. For the backward pass, it is not going to be subtraction instead of addition. So this is going to be 26 minus 1, which is going to give us 25. So this is 25. So now, as you can see, activity P is connected to activity M, activity N, and also activity O. So we're going to distribute 25. So this is going to be 25 here. We're also going to have 25 here. Then we're also going to have 25 here. So now, this is going to be 25 minus 1, which is going to give us 24 for activity M. So this is 24. Then for activity N, this is 25 minus 2, which is going to give us 23. So this is 23. Then for activity O, this is going to be 25 minus 1, which is going to give us 24. Now for activity L, as you can see, we're having two activities linking up to activity L. So meaning we are going to take the lowest value instead of the highest value because this is backward pass. So what is the lowest value? The lowest value, as you can see here, is 23. So we're going to move 23 here. So this is 23. So 23 minus 1 is going to give us 22. So now let's look at activity J. So for activity J, for activity J, we're also going to move 23 here. Yeah? So this is going to be 23. So this is 23. So now 23 minus uh, 2, this is going to give us 21. So for activity G, as you can see, we're having two activities connecting activity G. We're having activity M, and we're also having activity N. So we're going to take the lowest value. So what is the lowest value? The lowest value is 23. So here it's going to be 23. So 23 minus 2 is going to give us 21. Activity K, it is going to be 22. That is why I'm going to move 22 here. So here it's going to be 22. So 22 minus 4 is going to be 18. Then for activity I, we are going to move 18 here. So this is 18. So 18 minus 1 is going to give us 17. Now for activity H, we need to take a look at activity J and activity K because they are connected to activity H. So we are going to take a look at the lowest value. So what is the lowest value? The lowest value here is 18. So we are going to move 18 here. So this is 18. So 18 minus 4 is going to be 14. So now for activity F, we're having three activities connected to activity F. We're having activity G, H, and I. So we need to take the lowest value. So what is the lowest value? The lowest value is 14. So let's move 14 here. So this is 14. So now we have 14 minus 6 is going to give us 8. So we're going to move 8. We're going to move it to activity A. Then 8 minus 1 is going to give us 7. So we're going to move 7, move it to activity D. So we have 7. 7 minus 4 is 3. Then we're going to move 3 to activity C. So we have 3 here. Then 3 minus 2 is 1. So now for activity A and activity B, they are connected to activity C. So we're going to distribute 1 to both activity A and activity B. So this is going to be 1 here for activity A and 1 for activity B. So 1 minus 1 for activity B is going to be 0. And 1 minus 1 for activity A is also going to be equal to 0. So as you can see, we're having 0 and 0. So we're just going to distribute this to the project starting activity. And this is going to be 0. So this is 0. So 0 and 0 is basically 0. So this is it. So all you need to do, you just need to fill up the total float. So for the total float, it is going to be the late finish minus the LS finish. So for activity P, it is going to be 26 minus 26, which is equals to 0. Then for activity N, it is 25 minus 17, which is going to be equal to 8. Then for activity N, it is 25 minus 25, which is 0. For activity O, it is 25 minus 24, which is equal to 1. Then for activity L, it is 23 minus 23, which is 0. For activity K, it is 22 minus 22, which is 0. For activity I, it is 18 minus it is 18 minus 13, which is going to give us 5. Then for activity J, it is 23 minus 20, which is going to give us 3. For activity G, it is going to be 23 minus 16, which is going to give us 7. 
Then for activity H, it is 18 minus 18, which is 0. For activity F, it is 14 minus 14, which is 0. Then for activity E, it is 8 minus 8, which is 0. Activity D, it is 7 minus 7, which is 0. Then for activity C, it is 3 minus 3, which is 0. Activity A is 1 minus 1, which is 0. Then activity B, it is also 1 minus 1, which is 0. Then for the project starting activity, it is also going to be 0. So everything here is 0 because this is the project starting activity. So this is it. This is how to draw the precedence diagram. So this is how the precedence diagram will look like. Now for the project time, that is the time it's going to take to finish the project. So for the project completion time, it is going to be 26 weeks because as you can see, you just need to take a look at the last activity. So whenever you want to determine the project uh, time, that is the time it's going to take to finish the project. Whenever you want to determine this time, you just need to take a look at the last activity. So for the last activity, we are having the earliest finish as 26, and we are also having the late finish as 26. So meaning the project is going to take 26 weeks to complete. So the project is going to take 26 weeks to complete. So this is the project completion time. So it can be in weeks, it can be in months, it can be in years. So this depends on the project managers. So this is how to draw a precedence diagram. So there are two things to take away from this video. When you are drawing the precedence diagram, you first of all start with the forward pass. And when you have two or more activities linking up to one activity, then you need to take the highest value and move it to the next activity. Then for the backward pass, that is after you finish the forward pass, for the backward pass, when you have two or more activities linking up to one activity, then you need to take the lowest value and move it to the next activity. For the forward pass, we usually add the values, then for the backward pass, we subtract the values so this is it and for the total float the total float is just going to be the late finish minus the earliest finish so this is how you can draw a precedence diagram so if you found this video useful if you found this video helpful please do not hesitate to subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed and if you are a newcomer like if you just found my channel then please do not forget to hit the red subscribe button below and also turn on the bell notification icon so that you get notified when I upload any civil engineering videos. Also, don't forget to share these videos to friends who want to understand how to draw precedence diagram. So with that being said, this is going to be the end of this video. You all take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.